How's it going, people? Still got a little bit of this left. And a little bit of this left. So let's combine them. Chapter 13 of Ether. That can't be lucky. Because it's towards the end of the book, and you know they all become extinct. <laughs> Moroni continues the Jaredite history. Yeah, because he got sidetracked the last time around, didn't he? Ether and his predictions. His life sought. He dwells in the cavity of a rock. Views by night the destruction falling upon his people. One. And now, I, Moroni, proceed to finish my record concerning the destruction of the people of whom I have been writing. Two. For behold, they rejected all the words of Ether. For he truly told them of all things from the beginning of man, and that after the waters had receded from off the face of the land, it became a choice land above all other lands. A chosen land of the Lord. Wherefore the Lord would have that all men should serve him, who dwell upon the face thereof. Three. And that it was the place of the New Jerusalem, somewhere here in America, which should come down out of heaven. Won't that be a trip? And the whole holy sanctuary of the Lord. I mean, a city descending out of the sky and onto the ground for people to live in. <laughs> yeah, pretty convincing there. For, behold, either saw the days of Christ, and he spake concerning a new Jerusalem upon this land. Well, that backs up all the other shit you said earlier on in this book about the stuff that came on, came about later. I don't know. This is getting pretty convincing here. <laughs> Five. And he spake also concerning the house of Israel and the Jerusalem from whence Lehi should come. After it should be destroyed, it should be built up again, a holy city unto the Lord. Wherefore, it could not be a new Jerusalem, because it's a, the old one. I mean, yeah, even if you gave it a new paint job, it just wouldn't be new. Any more than this book is gold. <laughs> it just, well, it is gold. <laughs> Rust-oleum. Uh, For it had been built in a time of old, and it should be built up again, and become a holy city of the Lord, and it should be built unto the house of Israel. 6. And that a new Jerusalem should be built upon this land unto the remnant of the seed of Joseph, for which things there has been a type. Seven. For as Joseph brought his father down into the land of Egypt, even so he died there. Wherefore, 
the Lord brought a remnant of the seed of Joseph out of the land of Jerusalem. Yeah, I remember Moses left and they had to go find uh, Jacob's bones so they could take him back to the promised land, which doesn't sound likely since they buried people in secret in Egypt. out of the land of Jerusalem, that he might be merciful unto the seed of Joseph, that they should perish not, even as he was merciful unto the father of Joseph, that he should perish not. 8. Wherefore the remnant of the house of Joseph shall be built upon this land, and it shall be a land of their inheritance. Yeah, fuck all those uh, those Levites, you know? Because there isn't any Levites in the line of Joseph. Yeah, they can be high priests and have their own temple in this land. Uh, yeah. And they shall build up a holy city unto the Lord like unto the Jerusalem of old, and they shall no more be confounded until the end come when the earth shall pass away. 9. And there shall be a new heaven and a new earth, and what else could it be? I mean, that's awesome. Because this one's kind of polluted and littered, and we're running out of oil. Put lots of oil in our new earth, okay? That would be heavenly. <clears throat> they shall be like unto the old, save the old have passed away. And all things have become new. Ten. And then cometh the new Jerusalem, and blessed are they who dwell therein, for it is they whose garments are white through the blood of the Lamb. And they are they who are numbered among the remnant of the seed of Joseph, who were of the house of Israel, like you keep saying. Eleven. And then also cometh the Jerusalem of old, and the inhabitants thereof, Blessed are they, for they have been washed in the blood of the Lamb. And they are they who were scattered and gathered in from the four corners of the earth. And from the north countries. And are partakers of the fulfilling of the covenant which Lord made with their father Abraham. Good old Abe. 12. And when these things come, and when these things come, bringeth to pass the scripture which saith, but first, something was brought to pass. That, boy, uh, scripture, which saith, there are they who were first, who shall be last. And they, and there are they who were last, who shall be first. There we go. Thirteen. And I was about to write more, but I am forbidden. Got this heavenly censor looking over his shoulder. Ah! His little cherub grabbing his arm. No! Mm -mm. Redact that. But great and marvelous were the prophecies of Ether, especially the shit he was forbidden to tell us about. But they esteemed him as naught, and cast him out, and he hid himself in the cavity of a rock by day, 
and by night he went forth viewing the things which should come upon the people. <clears throat> Goddamn phone's ringing. Oh well. Fourteen! It's not going to stop, is it? Damn it. And as he dwelt in the cavity of a rock, he made the remainder of this record, viewing the destructions which came upon the people by night. So he and Moroni got a lot in common, being the last of their kind, writing down the records before they croak. Fifteen. And it came to pass. That, in that same year, in which he was cast out from among the people, there began to be a great war among the people. For there were many who rose up, who were mighty men, and sought to destroy Coriantumr by their secret plans of wickedness, of which hath been spoken. 16. And now Coriantumr, having studied himself in all the arts of war and all the cunning of the world, wherefore he gave battle unto them who sought to destroy him. 17. But he repented not, neither his fair sons nor daughters, neither the fair sons and daughters of Kohor, <coughs> neither the fair sons and daughters of Korihor, and in fine, there were none of the fair sons and daughters upon the face of the whole earth who repented of their sins. 18. Wherefore, it came to pass. Wow. That in the first year that Ether dwelt in the cavity of a rock, there were many people who were slain by the sword of those secret combinations fighting against Coriantumr that they might obtain the kingdom. 19. And it came to pass. The sons of Coriantumr fought much and bled much. All right. 20. And in the same year the word of the Lord came to Ether that he should go and prophesy unto Coriantumr that if he would repent of all, repent and all his household, the Lord would Give unto him his kingdom and spare the people. 21. Otherwise, they should be destroyed, and all his household, save it were himself. <coughs> and he should only live to see the fulfilling of the prophecies which had been spoken concerning another people receiving the land for their inheritance, and Coriantumr should receive a burial by them. And every soul should be... Hang on. Oh, more South American evidence. <laughs> that there was a civilization here, and it was somewhat sophisticated. Yep. I mean, that's, that's pretty convincing, isn't it? That People were building with rock in South America. Uh, destroyed, save it were Coriantumr. Damn, that's harsh. 22, and it came to pass. That 
Coriantumer repented not, <clears throat> neither his household, neither the people, and the war ceased not. And they sought to kill Ether, because he was a buzz killer. But he fled from before them and hid again in the cavity of a rock. 23. And it came to pass. That there arose up Sherad, and he also gave battle to Coriantumr, and he did beat him, insomuch that in the third year he did bring him into captivity. Twenty-four. And the sons of Coriantumr in the fourth year did beat Sherid, and did obtain the kingdom again unto their father. Twenty-five. Now there began to be a war upon all the face of the land. Every man <coughs> with his band fighting for that which he desired. 26. And there were robbers, and in fine all manner of wickedness upon all the face of the land. 27. Uh, hang on. I'm not ready. Okay, now I'm ready. Where the fuck am I, though? Oh, 27. And it came to pass... That Coriantumur was exceedingly angry with Sherid, and he went against him with his armies to battle, and they did meet in great anger. And they did meet in the valley of Gilgal. And the battle became exceeding sore. 28. And it came to pass twice in this verse. That Sherrod fought against him for the space of three days, and it came to pass again. There's safe rules. That Coriantumr beat him, and did pursue him until he came to the plains of Heshlon. 29. And it came to pass. That Sherrod gave him battle again upon the plains, and behold, he did beat Coriantumr and drove him back again to the valley of Gilgal. 30. And Coriantumr gave Sherrod battle again in the valley of Gilgal, <coughs> in which he did beat Sherrod and slew him. Gilgal was lucky for him. 31. And Sherrod wounded Coriantumr in his thigh. For he, wait, uh, thigh, that he did not go to war again for the space of two years. He was on the mend. In which time all the people up upon the face of the land were shedding blood, and there was none to restrain them. Damn. Anyway, that's it for 13. That was a downer. But we're getting some battles and stuff. And it's almost over. So stay tuned. And we'll finish this together. We'll do it alone if I have to.
Let me know if you learned something, okay? Peace the fuck out. Have a wonderful whatever the fuck it is you're having. And read a good book. It'll have to be a different one than this. Goodbye. Oh, here's a good one. This one.